The simplex converted to a Great Western Railway Prairie Tank. This is part 96. After a 13 hour power cut I can now edit and voice over this episode which features the painting of small parts followed by fitting the new handrail stanchions on the other side and sticking on the brass numbers and name plates then applying the water slide transfers. I've been busy tethering my internet connection to the phone but now the route has started working again. Hopefully the power will stay on because it goes off quite a lot in this village. What I'm trying to do is voice over the painting of some parts in the outer part of the workshop. I painted these parts in the last episode using etching primer. Now it's time to get serious and spray them using some HMG satin black paint. As you can see these metal parts are on an upturned plastic tub which in turn is sat on my turntable. And in no time at all the parts are painted. So it's back into the main workshop to fix the handrails into the handrail stanchions for the other side of the superstructure. Just as before I'm using some Loctite 603 to hold them all together. Once you've applied this Loctite 603 to the parts you mustn't hang around. The best thing to do is to push the handrail and the stanchions through the holes. That way you know that once the Loctite 603 is fully cured they're going to fit in the holes. What I'm doing here using a piece of 100 grit emery cloth is really scoring the underside of one of the nameplates. This is keying the metal to take the adhesive. It's cyanoacrylate adhesive or super glue and I'm applying quite a lot of it to the rear but not in big blobs. If you do this in large blobs on the rear of a badge like this and then press it into place the adhesive will run out of the sides. I wasn't sure where to put these numbers so I looked at lots of pictures of Great Western Railway Prairie Tanks and the position differed quite a lot. Most of the photographs showed the number plate a bit lower than this but I can't do that because some rivets are in the way. I initially tried the number plate below the rivets but it just didn't look right. And why did I put this badge here? Well I don't know really, it just seemed to look okay. I really am not a train spotter and this is not really a Great Western Railway Prairie Tank, it is a simplex pretending to be one. I stuck this plate where it was originally stuck, right at the back, but it was quite badly marked so after I'd fitted it I touched it in using some HMG satin black which dries fairly matte. It looks a bit wrong at the moment but once it's dried it should all look okay. I left all the handrails in brass because if you paint them the chip and so by not painting them I will avoid any chips on the handrails and stanchions. I've just stuck the number on the other side in exactly the same place as the one on the other side is. An inch from the back and an inch from the handrail and level with the top of the rivets. I finished this part of the job by sticking the other makers plate in place. Now I really don't like doing this kind of a job it's sticking on water slide transfers. I bought them from Phoenix Precision Paints and they really are first class. And according to the man at Phoenix Precision Paints who was very helpful when I spoke to him on the phone, he told me that these were the ones I needed for a mixed traffic engine. I think they will also be okay for my schizophrenic simplex prairie tank. Here I'm very carefully cutting the backing paper so I end up with separate transfers. This job is hard enough when you're doing it just without anybody watching, but when the camera's watching, believe it or not, I got nervous. The instructions suggest that you should use some masking tape to line everything up, but I was a bit worried that the masking tape may pull the paint off the side of the tank. So as usual, I did it more or less by eye. I got a photograph on my phone showing one side of a prairie tank, but I couldn't get it to look like this. For it to look right I had to position the word great and the word western slightly closer together than on the photograph. I put both of the transfers into the water together and the first thing they do is curl up but after a while they straighten out again then they're ready to use. The distance between the top of the tank and the bottom is 5 inches and I found a rivet that was 2.5 inches down. So on this side at least I used it for the initial alignment. I worked it out that I needed two and an eighth between the transfers on the part that is five inch. But as the tank slopes towards the front, I had to use my calibrated eye on that bit. Once I'd lettered one side, very carefully I turned the superstructure over, resting it on a piece of rolled up cloth near the front, and well away from the transfers that I'd just applied. 
In this clip, I put the transfer in the wrong place. The word Western needs moving closer to the door. But luckily, the entire transfer is currently floating on a pool of water, so you can move it easily, but they are very, very fragile. You really do need a very delicate touch for this job. If you pull the transfer too hard, it will start to break up. Here's a top tip. Apply a little bit more water over and around the transfer if it's starting to stick. Then you can float it again. And that's just what I'm doing in this clip. You can see what I've done here. The word western is definitely more rearward than it was. I lined it up with a row of rivets and it seems to work okay. Now I need to get rid of some of the water. Often I use kitchen roll for this, but I do prefer this cotton cloth that I use in the workshop a lot. I have a lot of this and it's curtain lining. I use it for a variety of jobs in the workshop. As is normal, Sod's Law, Murphy's Law or the Chaos Theory says that the last part of the job that you do will not be right. And I did actually tear the word great in a couple of places, but by the time I flattened it out with the cloth and removed the water, it looked fine. According to my ruler, this lettering is straight, but the camera angle makes it look like it slopes towards the front, but I don't think it does. If you're a really avid miniature railway or full-size railway enthusiast, at this stage you're probably considering self-harm. But don't do that, because after all is said and done, it is only a toy train. Did I say toy train? Sorry, I mean model steam locomotive. Or better still, miniature steam locomotive. I had to grind a bit off the flap to make it fit in the slot in the roof. I know I should have thought about this earlier on in the job, but I do get it wrong sometimes. But then again, it's down to me to put it right. And here, I'm giving the part another coat of HMG Satin Black. And when the paint on this part is dry, it should look great and also fit in the slots. Part of the roof guides will also need touching in with Satin Black. In this clip, I've placed the roof in its approximate position and it's looking okay. This locomotive is looking quite different to how it looked when I first got it in the workshop. The fun part is still to come. Fitting the boiler in position really is going to be difficult, especially to avoid damaging the boiler and or the superstructure as I fit it into the frames. When the power cut happened last night at 10 o'clock, I sat in the dark for about an hour, waiting for the power to come back on, but it didn't come back on so I went to bed. But I was still thinking about a couple of things. One is the fitting of the boiler into the frames, and the other thing I was thinking about was applying some satin varnish to the transfers to seal them and hold them in place. I really do need to do this because these transfers are very fragile in their current state. But first of all, I need to leave them for a few days to dry thoroughly. And that's it for this episode. Stay healthy, thanks for watching, and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my Mainsteam Models website and click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists. And by doing that, you can find other videos that you may like to watch. And by using the playlists, you can actually watch the videos back to back.